Mayor, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Paul. How are you doing? It's good to have you. I was watching some of your press conference yesterday, and I think you put it with um, urgency that, that something had to be done. So for the people who didn't get a chance to see that, uh, speak to why your concerns yesterday and also how you guys are going to be opening up the city of Vicksburg. Okay, first of all, let's let's talk about open up the city of Vicksburg. What I did, the simple thing to do is adopt the governor's guidelines and uh, started to open up uh, those things that he said and the CDC and the president's uh, task force said we can open. And uh, we did that, uh, didn't try to extend it. Uh, we're going to phase in uh, every week that we, we are given a some authority to do some, we'll phase it in. And the reason for that, so that we can track uh, the population coming in. My city uh, employees have uh, been in work for about two weeks. Uh, doors are open. No service was disrupted. Uh, we have five employees off because uh, they are underlying illness or their age. And we have about three has some indirect exposure and we're running fine. And so we're beginning to open up the restaurants and some of the recreation. Uh, we'll open up the recreation as quick as quick as we can sanitize all of it. What about the how how important is the, to get the casinos open over there too? Absolutely important. Sixteen percent of our budget is depending on casino revenue. Ironically, uh, before this virus hit, the casino uh, was running over uh, compared to last year. Uh, and I guess that's because it was a sports betting and thing. And uh, not only that, the casino employs so many people in Vicksburg. Well, also, and in, in my understanding is the park is closed, too. So that's uh, another um, um, avenue as, as far as income is concerned that you don't have. Well, that's the reason why I hope that if the legislature is going to start talking about small business, that they start talking about tourism. Because mm -hmm. uh, m most of my... Uh, revenues come from tourist related uh, uh, programs and things and and tourists coming to our city we uh, you don't get into our hotels and uh, eat in our restaurants and visit our downtown small retail shop uh, unless there's a big in influx of tourism so you can imagine we're devastated over here it's almost like a we dismal you know and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, and it's it's not only in our state, uh, Mayor, but it's everywhere else. People are looking at this now with hindsight. And I understand there's a lot of things we didn't know about this virus, and it scared a lot of people. We're still scared. We understand uh, its propensity to take out some uh, people with underlying conditions. We understand all of that. But I hear this over and over now as we began to say we're opening up. We had 32 people reported dead yesterday. That's the highest we've ever had in a one-day reporting period. We had 330 cases, new cases, so we haven't hit peak. I mean, if this is the case, who knows what it's going to be tomorrow. And we're now talking about opening up things. And my question was, did we do this the wrong way? Did If you went to some of the people in your city, some of the local businesses, the dress uh, shops, the, the, the pastry shops, some of the mom-and-pop operations – they could have done this before without closing their doors and handle it the same way. Could they not have? Well, it's a little different. Uh, first of all, we have to understand this has never happened before. This is different. We didn't understand it. We didn't know the impact of it. So we did what we thought was best. Uh, certainly the city of Vicksburg tried to do uh, what was best and be more proactive. And it was best for us to shut down and reevaluate than to start figuring out what could stay open, what couldn't stay open. Uh, I think we made a uh, good decision based upon the CDC, uh, the White House Task Force, and the governor recommendation. We were two weeks ahead of this. Had we not, we could very easily have more than two deaths. And thank God we only have two deaths and about, as of yesterday, 88 cases. And most of those cases that was tested positive didn't even come from uh, the population of Vicksburg or Warren County. It became because... Uh, we had a adjacent uh, uh, company with some employees with a high influx of uh, positive. And so because they lived in Vicksburg by way of our hotel and uh, rent uh, houses and things, and we had to absorb that number. 
But I think Vicksburg has been, done a great, in fact, a phenomenal job handling this. I don't know of any other way I would have done it if I had to do it all over. Yeah. What uh, What are some of the things, what are some of the loosening uh, restrictions that you guys are going to do in Vicksburg? Well, we did the same thing the governor said we can do, to open up the restaurant at 50% capacity and at the same time require that they have uh, their employee be tested, wear masks and those things. I did not mandate, and uh, I'm not going to mandate because if you start mandating masks uh, for them, for not the employee, but the public, then you're going to get into trying to police everybody or every other person walking the street. And we got much more uh, important things to do than that. I think people have to take it upon themselves and take self-responsibility uh, and and protect themselves first. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this, though. Take off your hat as mayor and, and put back on your legislative cap for a moment or two. What's uh, what's your analysis or your comments on the squabble that's going on in the state house and senate versus the governor's office? It's unnecessary. And let me just say something. I endorse uh, uh, Deborah Holden as lieutenant governor because he, I think he's a great guy. Uh, Phil Gunn is my best friend uh, in the legislature on the house side. We've always been great friends. Uh, Tate Reed, I was on his finance committee and I endorse him. But this time, uh, the governor is right. It, in crisis, you ought to look to one person, not a body of people. And we did the same thing when uh, we were all Democrats and Hayden Bravo was Republican. And, and, and I can remember like it was yesterday, Billy McCoy said it makes no difference. We're going to put the politics aside. We're going to let him show us how to do it. And the same thing that the governor is doing, I hear all this stuff about uh, accountants firm and, and a law firm and an RLP. We did the same thing. Haley used Bacon Donaldson. And what you do is you put an RLP out there so that uh, you can select somebody to uh, comply with all this, to make certain that the money is spent right so that you can apply to the federal governor do it. Now, I hear all this stuff about uh, the auditor can do it. No, the auditor cannot do it because the auditor, what his responsibility and role is to look at the expenditures and appropriation and make certain after the expenditure of the appropriation have been spent. Because if an auditor can do uh, what they think he can do on this, they would have caught the $94 million that was misspent by one of the agencies uh, at the Department of Human Services. All right. I don't think anybody's talking about uh, that. That's enough. Uh, that's a different subject from what we uh, the legality, whether the House and Senate are is right or are right or is the governor right as far as the legality in this. Okay. Forget oh, about the. Oh, let's, look at the let's look at. The, OK, let's look at the Constitution. OK, I, I hear the argument about the Constitution. I made that argument. I made the mm -hmm. argument that the money that was that was derived from the. Uh, tobacco money should go through the legislative process. We won that fight because mm -hmm. that was money derived from one of the agencies suing somebody. This was the this was the Congress giving you emergency money, and I think the way I understood it, that the money was given to uh, the governor to administer because this is what you got, Paul. What happened if you out of session and there's a a a a a a a, a uh, outbreak? of this disease, what happened down in Grand Gulf where we have a nuclear explosion and you can't get to the capital? Who spend the money then? Who exercised the money then? I got to ask you a couple of more questions. Can you hang on there? I can stay alone if you want me All to. Right. <laughs> I, I love this television thing here. This is this is nice. We're available at Super Talk TV and you like on my the radio. I'm sorry? You like my man? It's I Superman like and Batman. What, is that it's what Superman that is? and Batman? Superman I didn't know and you Batman. A, did you did you get that out of a flower sack or did you make that out of a flower sack or is it professionally done? A nice lady made it for me and I've been wearing it ever since. <laughs> I like it. Back with more and the wonders. <laughs> The uh, mayor of Vicksburg is on with us and also on Super Talk TV. If you want to jo uh, uh, join us there, please do, or anywhere else uh, on social media. i got to ask you, though, because I look to you as one of the political historians there, okay? 
and I know you're always honest with me. Go back into this as far as the House and Senate and the governor's office and explain to all of your knowledgeable fans out there exactly what's going on behind the scenes. What's going well, on with this, I can't, this brouhaha? I, I can't explain what's going on behind the scene now, but when we was behind the scene, I can remember each time with Haley and with Phil, we mm-hmm. gave the governor authority to uh, spend the money. And what we did is held him accountable for spending the money through the process. And the reason for that is because we didn't want to get bogged down into a legislative process of the money. For instance, one person uh, can can hold up the legislative process on the floor if they held a bill up for consideration. You can go in and do it, anything you want to do, but uh, it takes two days to get a bill out of the House and two days to get it out of the Senate. And that's because a person can hold a bill over. Yep. So that's four days if somebody don't di- agree. It's fine I mean, but, when everything is great. Let me ask you this, though. So... When the, the governor says, um, wait a minute, this 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 is not even a bill. This is a piece of paper because you guys didn't do, you speak about the Constitution. You didn't go by the Constitution on this one. You didn't give an extra day there for points of uh, reconsideration to hold a bill. You uh, agree with that? Well, absolutely. Uh, any person has, any member has a right to hold a bill one day over. Now, if you leave on a Monday, I've seen it where we sent a bill to the governor on a Friday and a member came back on a Monday and we had to hold that bill over. Now, hold it. Now, you can, because it's one day late, you can enter a motion to reconsider and then table that motion the same day. The only day that you can reconsider, uh, you can uh, reconsider, you can't reconsider and table the same day is sign and die. But you, every member, that's why it's called four days. And that's... Uh, and that's 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 the constitutional uh, rule. So this is, this, and, this is not this, from the rules committee. This is not from the rules committee. This is this is no, based that's on the constitutional. One member can hold okay. a bill over. All right, and this wasn't done. Well, oh, I don't know. I don't know what was done. I, I'm just speaking to how the process worked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think that I think if it goes to court. And it's a constitutional quality. It can either go to state court or federal court. It can go to state court because of the constitution of the state, but it can go federal court yeah. because the federal government administered the money. But if the question comes in, if it goes to court, I think the government's going to win. And that's because they keep on talking about this. Well, the, the Supreme Court has ruled a number of times that the rules of the House or the Senate or the rules of the House or the Senate, this is not a rule. This is a constitutional of course. So it may be different. Yeah. Well, one of the things, and I, I know you probably are on page with, with me on this one, that I hate to see this rumble, especially with the, the, all of them being in the, in the same party. It's not something we expected. Well, I shouldn't say not expected. It's something that, that most people wouldn't expect for the all Republicans or all Democrats to be fighting each other in this manner. But I think you would well, uh, as a historian. Unu- you don't think it's unusual? I don't unusual? think it's unusual. I don't think it's unusual for people to fight, especially when you're talking about the kind of money you're talking about. One point two five billion dollars with a B is a lot of money. But I tell you this, I'm very surprised that the people that I respect highly are arguing about this. Uh, I can't see why over the weekend the speaker, the lieutenant governor, and the governor couldn't couldn't have gotten in a room and can and, and come to some conclusion because we're I suffering agree. out here. Yeah. We're hurting. The barbers are hurting. The beauticians are hurting. The spas, the city. If we don't do something by June the 30th and they go out of session on July 1st, I'm losing $2.8 million projected. And the reason why I set June the 15th before I lay off, because I want to know whether or not the state going to be able to help us. I've already mm-hmm. asked the president to help us with money. We're suffering. People don't want to hear the bickering about politics. What they want is results. They want us to get the money to them. Now, so and, Mayor, and, what, and that's the only thing I'm saying. We got problems out here. All right. What I hear you say as a former legislator in the House of Representatives is that regardless of what the speaker says, this speaker or any other speaker, there's no way for the legislative process to be as fast as the governor, one person making that decision. 
I don't think so, but I think there, there are enough accountability and there's enough check and balance where they can hold his hand uh, to the expenditures of the money. Mm -hmm. The money got to be spent by the end of the month. This will, Okay, let me show you one case. They're arguing, and it's, they may meet tomorrow and Friday. I don't know if they're going to meet Saturday and Sunday. The unemployment money, the $600, the $600 money is over June, July 30th. I can't ladies uh, if I lay these folks off on June, July 1st, they're not gonna get that extra six hundred dollars. That's hurting these people. They only get they're gonna only get the two fifty. But right now, as we argue this, uh they're losing. They the people are losing. They're not getting any unemployment money because of the fact uh the money's in limbo. How many people are are you uh, are talking about having to lay off? Uh, 20 percent of, and which is percent of a, a 412, probably around 47 to 50 people. All right. So, you have you heard from anybody in Jackson as far as the governor or the lieutenant governor or the speaker? I haven't talked to anybody. Okay. Other than I'm begging them to put this behind us. If it takes working tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, on through the 18th. What's the difference in coming in one mm -hmm. or two days and just staying over there? We just need help. The um, the speaker did say in the air with cities, me. If not, sit, if not, the city's going to go bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, the speaker did say in the air with me earlier this morning that they uh, they could stay Friday or Saturday. A lot depends, I think, on what the uh, what the uh, what the governor is going to do if he's going to veto that. Then they probably coming in for a veto override, which will happen on what, Friday? Possibly. Well, I don't know about that, what they're going to do on that. If I was governor, I wouldn't even veto it. I'd let it become mm -hmm. law and sue. And sue and take it to court that way. Absolutely. Mm. Your wisdom is always appreciated, sir. Any final thoughts here? Because the reason part. why, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get into a political fight when I know I'm right. Well, the other thing, too, is if it goes to the Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, that's going to eat up more time, is it not? Uh, not necessarily. They can embank the courts. All right. Mayor of Vicksburg and uh, opening up slowly but surely. Mayor, it's always good talking to you, sir. Good put, talking to you, Paul. Uh, put, put the mask on for us and let me see what the whole thing looks like. See? Oh, man, I love that. That is that is neat. That is, that's one of the best masks I've seen there. So, I just don't need help, Paul. Hey, don't hold your Paul. hands up like this, though. Paul, I just need yeah. help. This, Paul. Go. I'm praying for help. How's that? Is that, is that prayer worth how much? Two point what? How many millions? 1.25 million. One, is that, what, is that two, how much one, money? You, two, you got five, how much money two, in it? One, well, I pray that every municipality and every uh, county we made hold as best they can right. on the law revenue. That's my prayer. But how much money does Vicksburg have into this that you need to, to infuse back into the system? $2.8 million. $2.8 million. Mayor George Flags, thank you, sir. God bless you, and uh, stay safe. We appreciate it very, very I much.